Hello everyone, welcome to Muckman Movies. The reason for this video is to take part in Tim Talks Talkies Movie Community Challenge. Um, this time round it's the top 25 70s movies. Now, I had real difficulty narrowing down the top 25 um, and I just feel so bad for leaving certain films out. So before I move on to my top 25 I'm going to read through a lot, and I mean, I mean a lot, of honourable mentions because any one of these films, another day, could have got into my top 25, depending on my mood and how I feel. So don't feel upset if some of these films don't get into my top 25, because on another day they could do. Um, but I'm going to read these out uh, very quickly. Um, as honourable mentions, Who Can Kill a Child, Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, Quadrophenia, The Towering Inferno, Walkabout, Le Cercle Rouge, Blue Collar, um, The Brood, Westworld, Hard Times, Jewel, Sleuth, The Wicker Man, The Poseidon Adventure, The Deer Hunter, Disney's Robin Hood, Enter the Dragon, Days of Heaven, Kelly's Heroes, Chinatown, Young Frankenstein, Badlands, Barry Lyndon, Dirty Harry, Get Carter, Silent Running, The Godfather Part 1 and 2, yeah, they didn't reach my t enter my top 25 purely because I've not seen them in a long time and it's always hard to fit them in because they're so long. Um, but one day I'll revisit them and I'm sure they'll get into my, even maybe my top 10, um, but I've not watched them in a long time. Um, Carrie, McCabe and Mrs. Miller, Network, Dog Day Afternoon, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Superman, Halloween, The China Syndrome, Marathon Man, Serpico, Assault on Precinct 13, The Outlaw Josie Wales, The Sting, and finally, The Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean, which was in my top 25, but was last minute pushed out by another film. Um, so yeah... Those are my honourable mentions. Hopefully some of these might enter your top 25s because you might have forgotten about them and hopefully I've helped you out um, naming them. But yeah, these aren't in my top 25 unfortunately but they could have so closely, they were so close to getting in there. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for my top 25 after this. So starting at number 25 is Martin Scorsese's classic The Taxi Driver starring uh, Robert De Niro, Jodie Foster, Sybil Shepherd. It's a bleak and uncompromising uncompr film about um, a man's mental health basically. Um, it just picks out all the sort of dirty and bad things about New York um, and Robert De Niro just absolutely kills it as the, it turns up pretty much psychotic in this. But yeah, um, number 25 is Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. Number 24 is Sam Peckinpah's the Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. What a Western this is. This is a bloody um, visceral Western uh, with some great performances from um, Chris Christopherson, James Coburn as Wyatt Earp, Chris Christopherson's Billy the Kid. Uh, you've got Bob Dylan who stars in this and he also um, did the film score and the soundtrack for the film. Um, and it's one of, one of the great film scores, to be quite honest. Um, I absolutely love this one, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid at number 24. At number 23 is Monty Python's The Life of Brian, one of my favourite comedies of all time. Um, it's absolutely hilarious. There's so many good moments in it. It goes off surreally into space as well and then plummets back down. Um, some Just some great comedic moments. 
I can't I can't recommend this highly enough. Number twenty three, Monty Python's Life of Brian, which got actually got banned in several countries due to the religious connotations um, that are in the film. So yeah, number twenty three, Life of Brian. Number twenty two is William Freakin's The French Connection. Um, Gene Hackman is a gritty uh, detective. Um, it's absolutely superb um, in its tone. Um, William Freakin directs the hell out of this. There's an amazing um, car chase under the tra under the train tracks, um, and apparently a lot of the cars on the street weren't aware that this was being filmed. Um, so God knows how they. The stuntmen worked around uh, people who didn't even know this was going on. The filming of the car chase was going on. Um, logistically, it must have been an absolute nightmare. But yeah, um, The French Connection is number 22. 25, 24, tw yeah, 22. Number 21 is uh, Hal Ashby's Harold and Maud. Now, I've only seen this for the first time in the last decade I think um, but it's absolutely brilliant the chemistry between Ruth Gordon and Bud Corp is oh man it's so amazing to watch and um, they're inseparable basically and like yeah one's a young boy and the other's an old woman but and they seem to fall in love but it doesn't seem to make much difference in this film you know you don't you don't take offense by it because they just love each other but yeah Harold and Maud absolutely cracking comedy um that's at 21 at 20 is Al alan parker's midnight express now this is bleak it's unforgiving um some fantastic direction by alan parker with some getting some amazing performances out of brad davis um john hurt randy quaid brad davis is amazing in this he sadly died of um aids um a few years after making this um, but yeah what a film Midnight Express is it's bleak and it's not a good it's not a happy watch um, so you need to be in the right mood to watch it but I think this is one of the best films of the 70s at number 20 um, at number 19 is a film I've only recently seen in the last couple of years but I had to put this in my top 25 because I had an absolute blast and that is King Boxer in this nice short scope arrow box set. Um, King Boxer starring I believe Lo Lai if I pronounced his name right as the uh, titular character. Um, it's also called under another name um, what is it Five Fingers of Death which I actually prefer that to King Boxer prefer that title five fingers of death it sounds more ominous and um sort of yeah foreboding but yeah i love this film it, i've been waiting to see this for a long long time so when this became available in this shaw shaw, shaw brothers um box set i had to pick it up and i wasn't disappointed what a film so much great bloody action in it um, it's got a recognisable film score that Quentin Tarantino paid homage to in uh, Kill Bill. Um, you, you totally recognise the film score um, when you what if you ever watch this. Um, yeah, number nineteen is King Boxer. So my number eighteen pick is a little horror film from Dario Argento called Suspiria. Now. This is such an iconic film. Um, it set a precedent, really, for just how stylish a giallo horror can be. Um, the colour, the lighting is absolutely saturated in reds and greens. and Oh, my God. It looks absolutely delicious, basically. Um, and in a gory and bloody fashion, that is, as well. It's scary as hell. Uh, there's, a dog, there's a dog scene in a courtyard that sends shivers up my spine every time um i absolutely love suspiria um if you're not seen that and you're into your foreign horror i highly recommend it 
So that's at number um, 18, I think. 18, 15, yeah, 18. At number 17 is Rocky. How can you not have Rocky in your top 25? It's one of the greatest sports movies of all time. Um, Sylvester Stallone wrote it. He dug his heels into starring it. And what a performance he puts in. A really great sporting film. Great underdog film. Some great performances from... Ro uh, I'm going to say from Rocky then. <laughs> from Sylvester Stallone. You've got Carl Weathers as Apollo Creed is formidable adversary. Um, you've got Talia Shire as the shy and re retiring um, girlfriend. Bert Young as the obnoxious brother-in-law. Uh, what a film Rocky is. Love this film. Number... I need to remember my numbers. Number 17. So number 16 is Francis Ford Coppola's Apocalypse Now. Um, it's another iconic war film, um, it shows the horrors of war, it shows how soldiers coped with the horror of war, like taking drugs to just get through it, um, Some great, a great cast, Martin Sheen, Marlon Brando, I think Lawrence Fishburne's in it, uh, Dennis Hopper, and you've got an amazing performance from Robert Duvall as the general as he takes his helicopters in in that iconic scene over the over the coastline um, to the music of Wagner's um, Flight of the Valkyries. Yeah, absolutely love this film. That's my number 16. Just outside of the scoring films, the scoring comes in at number 15, which is John Borman's Deliverance. I love this film. It's, it's bleak. Um, it's uncompromising. Some great performances. Burt, Burt Reynolds, arguably Burt Reynolds' best performance in his whole career. Um, I think he's amazing as the badass canoeist uh, who's trying to uh, defend his colleagues, his friends. Um, some really disturbing scenes in this. One of one act of violation, but then you've got great scenes such as the dueling banjo scene at the beginning. Um, this is an amazing film of survival, um, adventure and horror, basically. Um, yeah, Deliverance is number 15, so that gets, starts scoring points. At number 14 is a film I grew up with um, from the late 70s and onwards. I've always gone back to this film, and that is The Wild Geese. What an amazing war film this is set in South Africa I think um, it's basically about a, a band of mercenaries who are hired to go in and rescue an African leader um, from the clutches of uh, a military coup um, you've got an amazing cast Richard Burton, Richard Harris, Roger Moore, Hardy Kruger um, who else you've got so many recognisable faces actors in this uh, from the 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, it's an amazing film. I absolutely love this. It's probably a little bit dated in terms of um, the political correctness, um, but if you watch it as a film of its time, you'll really enjoy The Wild Geese. So that's number 14. Number 13 is The Man Who Would Be King. What a film! It's like an epic. It's almost like a fairy tale, really, but set in a hostile times. You've got Michael Caine, Sean Connery. You've got Billy the Fish, oh, uh, and Christopher Plummer, who's who plays Rudyard Kup, uh, Kipling. Sorry, um, I love this film. It's great. Uh, it's just a really good story. Um, don't really know what else to say without spoiling it, but if you've not seen The Man Who Would Be King, I highly recommend it. That's my number 13. Make sure they don't fall off. My number 12, uh, which will be in many people's top 25s, is Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Um, this is just 
one of the best sci-fi films of all time, isn't it? Um, it's not an it's not action packed. It's more like a conspiracy theory, um, where you've got Richard Dreyfus who comes across some UFOs and then suddenly starts to have like visions and premonitions, um, and he finds himself on a journey with other strangers to find find the UFOs basically at Devil's Tower, I, th I believe. So yeah, I love this film. It's great. The visual effects are still hold up today. The you know the spacecrafts flying around in the sky, the music, the iconic music. Um, what's not to like about Close Encounters of the Third Kind? So that is my number twelve pick. My number eleven pick is. <clears throat> um, it's a film I watched quite recently in the last probably 18 months and absolutely fell in love with it um, and that is Peter Bogdanovich's Paper Moon. Um, I think it was when P Peter Bogdanovich died I decided to watch some of his filmography so I picked this one up, absolutely fell in love with it. The chemistry between Ryan O'Neill and Tatum O'Neill is absolutely unbreakable. It's so good. Um, I just love the adventure that they go on. Like a con man ends up sort of basically persuading this girl to be his accomplice, basically. Um, but they go on such a great journey and they sort of, you know, they grow to love each other. Um, but yeah, Paper Moon, absolutely love this film. I watched it twice in a row when I first watched it. So, yeah, love this. Paper Moon. Number... Which number is that now? I don't know. Is that 11? Yeah, number 11. And then my number 10 pick. I think it's 10. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. My number 10 pick. I really should have written these down in front of me, really. Um, so my number 10 pick is... One of my favourite comedies ever. I always go back to this when I need a laugh. And it's Steve Martin in The Jerk. So many hilarious moments of stupidity in this. Um, from him just hitching a ride outside his house. To the exploding cans in the in the petrol station. In the, <laughs> in the gas station. Oh god, there's so many hilarious, stupid moments. Um... But it's so good. It's so good. It makes me laugh every time. So number 10 is The Jerk. So my number 9 spot goes to another Sam Peckinpah film. And that is Cross of Iron. This is such a great anti-war film. Starring James Coburn as Rolf Steiner. A corporal at loggerheads. With um, Maximin Maximilian Schell's um, Captain Stransky. Um, Captain Stransky is obsessed with getting um, what the Cross of Iron, basically. Uh, but he sends most of his soldiers to the death. Um, you've got David Warner, James Mason. Uh, such a great cast. It's absolutely gritty as hell. You can see the dust in the air. Um, it's thunderous with all its uh, tanks and explosions. And there's a great... Uh, soundtrack, a German soundtrack that really sort of unnerves you at times, um, especially at the end. Um, there's a, some good scenes. Absolutely love this one. Number nine, Cross of Iron. Number eight is, um, I'm trying to work, I can't remember the director now. That's it, Franklin J. Schaffner's Papillon. Love this film. I've grown up watching this film for probably a good portion of my life. Um, Steve McQueen and Dustin Hoffman's chemistry is just amazing in it. Um, and it's a film that spans decades as these prisoners try and escape, um, like a, a an island that's uh, owned by France. Um, but yeah, absolutely a brilliant film. It's an epic Anyone who's not seen the original, because I think there's a remake with Charlie Hunnam, but um, this is the one to watch. It's a classic. Number eight, Papillon. 
Number seven is Philip Kaufman's Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Another film I've, you know, lived with for most of my life. I've watched it so many times. So many scary moments in it, um, spine-tingling moments. Uh, you've got a great cast of Donald Sutherland, uh, Brooke Adams, Jeff Goldblum, um, Veronica Cartwright and Leonard Nimoy. So a great cast. It's a film of paranoia. Um, this is like the probably one of the best films of paranoia. Um, just probably comes a little bit after the thing but that's in the 80s so yeah invasion of the body snatchers it's so great there's some great atmosphere in it um, and it's scary as hell um, yeah number seven i believe is invasion of the body snatchers <clears throat> number six isn't probably my favorite comedy of all time um i just find it hilarious it's absurd um it's stupid and obviously it comes from the people that brought brought you Monty Python and that is the Holy Grail, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. So many hilarious scenes in this. You've got the the um, fight with the Black Knight, you've got the Knights of Ni, um, you've got the catapult in cows, <laughs> you've got the police turning up at the end um, and that's, you know, that's just... A handful of the uh, funny moments in it. Um, oh god, it's so funny. Even like Sir Lancelot trying to rescue the damsel in distress. <laughs> I mean, and he just ends up killing everyone. It's so funny. This is my favourite comedy of all time, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. At number five. <clears throat> so my number five pick is quite possibly the best science fiction film of all time, if not the most iconic, and that is George Lucas's Star Wars. This set a benchmark for science fiction. It's got a great story. Um, it was inspired by Akira Kurosawa's The Hidden Fortress, if none of you know that, or some of you don't know that. Um, but yeah, George Lucas's Star Wars, great characters, some great um, actors in it. A lot of them unknowns at the time, but the most famous probably Alec uh, Guinness and Harrison Ford as Han Solo. But um, yeah, what can you say about this? It's got such a great film score by John Williams. Um, some great, you know, action sequences. It's just a story that everyone can engage with. If you've not seen Star Wars yet, where have you been? Uh, but yeah, my number five pick is Star Wars. My number four pick is William Freakin again. This is his second appearance, and that is The Exorcist. <clears throat> now, I've grown up with this since an early age, basically. Um, rightly or wrongly, my parents introduced me to this film when I was probably about seven or eight, um, and it absolutely terrified me. Um, but yeah, The Exorcist is one of the best, if not the best, horror film um, of all time. Um, it's definitely up there. Great performances, great atmosphere. It's spine chilling. Um, so many moments where it sends shivers up my spine. Linda Blair as the possessed uh, child, Regan. She puts in an absolutely award-winning performance. Um, you've got uh, Jason Miller, as Father Karras, you've got Max von Sydow, um, and you've got Ellen Bernstein as the uh, Regan's mother. She's amazing too. Um, just the direction, um, William Freakin put the actors through hell during this film. Um, but like, yeah, it, it just makes all the difference. Basically, it's such a great film. There's so many moments in it that just scare the hell out of me. So, number four, The Exorcist. Then number three <clears throat> is uh, Milos Foreman's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, starring Jack Nicholson, one of his best ever performances as um, 
a prisoner who feigns. Why has it gone so dark in here? What's going on? I think the I think the dark clouds are coming over. <laughs> Apologies. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, Jack Nicholson as a prisoner who feigns a mental condition so he can, you know, have it easy in a mental institution, uh, but things don't obviously go according to plan. Um, what a cast in this as well. I mean, a lot of these films I've chosen, amazing casts. Jack Nicholson, Brad Dourif puts in a career best performance. Um, Louise Fletcher as Nurse Ratchet. Oh, my God. What a performance. You just really hate her. Um, who else is in it? You've got Danny DeVito. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Lloyd. What a, what a cast. Such a compelling uh, drama. And you're really warm to the characters, apart from obviously Louise Fletcher's Nurse Ratchet. But you really do warm to the to the patients in there. Great film number three, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So my number two pick is another great science. In fact, this is my favourite science fiction film. If well, no, it isn't. Tell a lie. My favourite science fiction film is in the eighties, uh, but this is the first film in the franchise, and that is Alien. Now, this is the best science fiction horror of all time, um, without a doubt. It's it's a timeless movie that's uh, test. You know, it's stood the test of time. All the special effects, the pro uh, the production, the set designs, the acting, everything is still as good now as it was back then. Um, when you watch it now, it's just far superior to um, anything that's been made with CGI. Uh, it's still terrifying, especially the iconic chest bursting scene. Um, I can't really, I, I, could, I could go on for hours talking about Alien, um, but I'm not going to, I want to keep this concise, but this is my number two pick. I absolutely adore Alien, and that led to my favourite film of all time, which is Aliens. So, yeah, number two is Alien. And then finally, <clears throat> and my T-shirt might give the, give the clue away, Quint. If you don't know who Quint is, then you've not seen the film, but yeah. My number one pick is Jaws, Steven Spielberg's Jaws, the very first summer blockbuster and the film that terrified people so much that they wouldn't go in, go and swim in the ocean. Um, kept people on the beaches and out of the sea, Jaws. Oh, great cast, great characters with great chemistry. Um, some So many great scenes. Um, my favourite scene when the showing off each other's scars and then they start talking about the Indian uh, USS Indianapolis um, love that scene um, there's some scary moments in it there's always the pulling the tooth out from under the under the boat that always scares the hell out of everyone even when you've seen it before it'll still make can still make you jump but yeah Robert Shaw Roy Schneider uh, Richard Dreyfus. It's probably the best trilogy of uh, characters ever to be seen on screen, in my opinion. Um, even though Robert Shaw and Richard Dreyfus didn't get on, um, it doesn't show. I think they're great. Uh, great, great film score, again, by John Williams. Um, so iconic. It's an iconic film. What a film. My favourite film of the 70s. Instantly rewatchable, <clears throat> not instantly, but forever rewatchable. Yeah, Jaws, my number one of the 70s. So, there you have it. What did you think of my top 25? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget, this is my 25, it's not your 25. Okay, some of my honorable mentions could possibly get in my 25 tomorrow or you know, the day after, but. Um, this is my 25 of today. Let me know what you think. Um, and if you have got a top 15 or top 25, 
leave them in the comments below and they can be counted towards the overall tally. Um, over at Tim Talks Talkies, make sure you give him a, a follow and uh, check out what his top 25 will be near the end of uh, February. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye.